This is, uh, this is breaking down glucose. This is the respiration. This is a glucose molecule. We're going to be breaking it apart. And the first step is called glycolysis. The first step to breaking apart glucose. So here's a glucose molecule. Want me to show you glycolysis? Bam. We break the glucose molecule in half. There are enzymes that will separate this in half. And I want you to understand something. Whenever we take a big molecule and we break it apart, protons and electrons fly off of the structure. And those protons and electrons are picked up by a carrier molecule called NAD. It's almost like the NADP that we saw here in photosynthesis. This NAD is a carrier molecule that picks up electrons and it picks up protons and forms a new molecule called NADH. If y'all aren't paying attention here, y'all are going to have a lot of trouble with this. Hang with me. Picks up protons and electrons? Yes, it does. Wait, what does? NAD. To form NADH? And it forms NADH. You want to watch it again? Everybody watch. This is the glucose molecule we start with. We start with glucose. This big mass of stuff is one of these. Same thing. I'm just showing you the, the individual parts up close. During glycolysis, we tear apart glucose. We end up, protons and electrons come off of this thing and are picked up by NAD to form a new molecule, NADH. So protons and electrons come off of what? Come off of the glucose when we tore it apart. Whenever you tear up a big molecule, protons and electrons are going to fly off everywhere. And, oh. I like to think of it, pretend like King Kong is picking up a car and he tears the car in half. Stuff goes everywhere. People fall out, there's glass, there's explosions, right? And so the same thing happens when we tear apart glucose. This, this molecule is being torn apart and stuff flies off of it and that stuff is picked up by NAD. And it picks it up and makes NADH. Did you have a question? I did. Um... And then NAD picks it up. Yes, and it picks NAD it. picks up the protons and electrons and forms NADH. Yeah. Where does glycolysis get its energy to rip apart the glucose? There are, there are enzymes that usually don't need energy to rip something apart. You need energy to put stuff together. So you most of the time, tearing stuff apart is, is a lot easier. Taking a big molecule and tearing it into smaller pieces doesn't usually require extra energy, except it usually requires enzymes to get over the activation energy. Yes? Does it tear like just evenly? Like yeah. In the tears, it, tears it down the middle. Okay. This is actually a series of about 10 steps. It's actually a long reaction. And it shows it to you right here. You start with the glucose and you tear it apart and tear it apart and tear it apart. It goes through all these steps and then you eventually end up with something smaller these things. They're called pyruvates. See that word pyruvate? This thing gets torn apart into the, these things. You want to see video footage of it? Glycolysis, which begins with the breakdown of glucose, is a series of 10 enzyme-catalyzed chemical reactions that can be divided into two main phases. In the energy investment phase, some ATP energy is used to start the process of glucose oxidation. By the end of this phase, a six carbon molecule, glucose, has been split into two three carbon molecules of glyceraldehyde phosphate. That was basically it. The three carbon glyceraldehyde phosphate molecules now enter the energy payoff phase. Chemical bonds are broken, and NAD plus picks up electrons and hydrogen ions, forming NADH. The energy release is used to attach phosphate groups. The phosphate circuit. Okay, so wasn't very good, but anyway, you uh, 
you break apart glucose and this NADH forms. Now, you also form a little ATP in this process. Some energy comes off of those molecules, and that energy is picked up by ADP and P. Energy comes out, and ADP and P pick up that energy and get put together to make ATP by some other enzymes. So ATP, ATP's energy gives ADP and P energy to make ATP. Well, here we start with glucose. Some ADP and P are nearby. When we split apart the glucose, some energy comes out. As ADP? No, just as energy. Oh, okay. And that energy causes ADP and P to come together to make ATP. So some ATP is made in this first process. It's called glycolysis. Now the NADHs, what happens to them? They go into the mitochondrion. And they go up to this thing, this is called the electron transport chain. And they drop off electrons onto the chain. And they drop off their protons. This is what the electron does. The ele I mean, sorry, the mitochondrion does. The mitochondrion picks up, takes the electrons from NAD, and these electrons go down this chain. It's called the electron transport chain. Step three. This is actually the fourth step. Skip the head a little bit. <coughs> electrons go down this chain, and as the electrons are going down the chain, their energy is used to move, a, move these protons out into this space right here. And you're going to see this happen over and over as we break down this glucose molecule. Every time we tear the glucose apart, some electrons and hydrogens come off of it. The electrons and hydrogens are picked up by this NAD molecule. And where does the NAD go? With its electrons and protons? It goes into the mitochondrion goes into the chain, drops the electrons off, drops the proton off, and the electrons go down this chain, and the hydrogens get pumped out. And what we're going to do is we're going to build up a concentration gradient out here with a bunch of hydrogens. And after this is done many times, you get a bunch of hydrogens in this area here. This area is called the intermembrane space. Intermembrane space. You know why we call it the intermembrane space? It's between this membrane and that membrane. The mitochondrion's got two membranes. Grace, are you with me? The mitochondria has got two membranes here, an inner membrane and an outer membrane, and a space between them. We call that space the intermembrane space. Hydrogens get pumped out into the intermembrane space, and guess where they'll come back in? The ATP synthase. Through the ATP synthase. And when they come back through the ATP synthase, ATP gets made. So are ADP and P just resting on those? ADP and P are sitting right here. They, they were floating around. They came into the mitochondria. They attached to this, and they wait. And a hydrogen ion will come through and slam those two together. The mitochondria just does this over and over again. Hydrogen ions come through, and ATP gets made every time. So what we've done is we've broken down glucose. We've taken its protons and electrons. We've picked them up with the NAD. We've transported them in. They run down this electron transport chain. The hydrogens get pumped out. They come back in and make ATP. That's how the mitochondria makes ATP. Yes? Where do the electrons go? Great question. 
This is why you have to breathe. Are you breathing right now? No. There's only one reason you're breathing right now. Oxygen, O2, that you're breathing, comes into your body, goes into your cells, goes into the mitochondrions, and goes to the end of this electron transport chain. This is the only thing in your body that uses oxygen. At the end of the electron transport chain, the oxygens will pick up the electrons. And when they do that, they become negatively charged and will attract some protons that came through the ATP synthase and form water. That's the water that's formed in respiration. The oxygen is the final electron acceptor at the end of the chain here. The electrons go down the chain and oxygen picks them up. This is why you have to breathe. You have to breathe so oxygen can pick up the electrons at the end of the chain. And after the hydrogens come through and make ATP, the hydrogens will stick to the oxygen and make water. So you breathe oxygen in and it becomes water in your mitochondrion. All the oxygen you're breathing in becomes water. Yes? Then why do we have to drink water? Because it's not enough. You'll make some water in your mitochondria, but it's not enough water. You need actually more water because you're losing water all the time. You're sweating, you're breathing out water, you're peeing. There's water coming out of you at all times, so you got to keep replenishing. This water is not enough for you. For some insects, they don't ever have to drink water. They can just use that. What do y'all think of this? It's hard stuff? Yeah. Read over this section. It is. It's a long process. We aren't even done because you know what's going to happen to these pyruvates? they got to go in here and get finished broken down. That's what we're going to go over.